when you and your family and friends go to the movies, you might be thinking about a lot of Hollywood special effects, big sound stages, location shots, but it may surprise you to learn just how many movies were shot either partially or in their entirety right here in Tacoma. If the house behind me looks familiar to you, that's because it was used extensively in filming 1992's The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Now, Tacoma's movie-making history dates back to the early 20s, and for that part of the story, we're going to go down to the Northwest Room at the Tacoma Public Library. Brian, what can you tell me about some of the earliest films that were shot in Tacoma? Tacoma had an earlier renaissance in films in the 1920s. There was a Hollywood-style motion picture studio at, near in the Titlow Beach area. Uh, they made three major talkies before the silence kind of put them out of business. Uh, one was called The Eyes of the Totem, which was the story of a woman who goes to Alaska with her husband. Uh, they make their fortune in Alaska, but then the husband is killed on the way back. The wife survives, but all she remembers is the killer's eyes. So this was filmed in Tacoma in front of the Tacoma's famous totem pole, and the woman uh, sat there by the totem pole looking for the murderer's eyes so she could get revenge hmm. on her husband. Finally, she does. It's a happy ending, and she sends her child to a local seminary when oh. she's done, and it's, of course, Annie Wright, and it's got a lo lot of local cast members in it. Uh, they really thought it was going to be great for Tacoma to have a motion picture studio here. Uh, it was called H.C. Weaver Productions, but some of the most well-to-do people in town were involved. Uh, Chester Thorne, for instance, and ironically, Thornwood has been used his mansion for mm -hmm. several films recently. Uh, General Ashton was another one. Also, William R. Rust, known for Rust and mm -hmm. the Rust Mansion, all were investors in the company. And they had grand visions of it promoting Tacoma around the world. In fact, uh, there was even some new housing projects. There was a housing project nearby called Hollywood on the Sea. Mm. And they had just some grand visions. Uh, unfortunately, the talkies again killed them in the studio burned in the 30s. Uh, Mount Rainier was another draw for local uh, for motion pictures. Also, Fort Lewis. There Something was shot there that was fairly prominent, I understand. Right. That was a major motion picture called The Patent Leather Kid. Richard Barthelmus was the star. Uh, supposedly his life story was the basis for A Star is Born. But uh, it was a World War I tale about a boxer who thinks he's tough because he can beat everybody up. But then he joins the service in World War II, World War I, rather, and learns what a real man is made of, basically. And they recreated a French villages on Fort Lewis. Uh, the local newspaper at the time had a reporter out there every day, kind oh. of a behind-the-scenes reporter, and just a very elaborate production. Uh, W.S. Van Dyke was the, the director, and it was a relatively successful film, although that was a separate company from the H.C. Weaver Productions. Uh, they also seemed to make uh, rough and tumble tales. The, their next film was called, uh, the first film actually was called Hearts and Fists, which was a story of a Northwest logging camp. Um, but it was just an exciting time in Tacoma. And when we've been out and done a segment at Thornwood Castle Bed and Breakfast about the Bed and Breakfast, I understand that it's been used in a couple of film productions recently. Tell me about that. Yeah, in 2000, it was used for Stephen King's um, ABC miniseries, Rose Red. It was a six-hour miniseries. And then um, the Diary of Ellen Rimbauer filmed out there most recently, and that was a prequel to the same movie. Well, I understand Tacoma is also kind of a hotbed for people that want to film commercials and corporate videos and so forth. Tell me about that, and why do you think it is that so many people like to use Tacoma for their shooting? Well, I think um, in the industry, I think that um, car and truck commercials um, and even companies like Eddie Bauer like to film in um, this area because of the natural beauty, the scenic beauty, and um, also for the ease of just filming here. It's just so much easier as far as permitting, closing roads. Um, it's smaller and less congested than you know, our 
neighbor to the north, and it's just, um, it's an easier process. But here's a partial list of some of the films that have been shot either partially or in their entirety in the Tacoma area. In 1974, it was Cinderella Liberty starring James Caan. 1975, Dandy the American Girl starring Stockard Channing and Sam Watterson. In 1988, it was Three Fugitives starring Nick Nolte, James Earl Jones, Martin Short and Alan Ruck. Now that's one of my personal favorites because I actually got to work on that production. I was involved in extras casting and for a short time was an extra myself. That's me there in the Tacoma police officer's uniform with James Earl Jones. And there I am again seated next to Martin Short and Alan Ruck. In 1998, 10 Things I Hate About You was filmed and they used the Stadium High School quite a bit for that movie. And then in the year 2000, it was Enough starring Jennifer Lopez. In addition to a number of films being shot in the Tacoma area, a number of stars have actually lived in the Tacoma area. Probably the most well-known one was Bing Crosby, who was born right here in this house on North J Street near the turn of the century. And there's a plaque here commemorating this. It says, Birthplace of Harry Lewis Bing Crosby. Actually, he was born Harry Lewis Crosby, but it was nicknamed Bingo after a popular comic strip of the day, and that was later just dropped down to Bing.